Hello and welcome to the Blockchain and Us, where pioneers and thought leaders talk about their journey in blockchain technology, crypto assets, and the token economy. And I'm your host, Manuel Staggers. If you enjoy this podcast, please give it a top rating and review on iTunes. And feel free to follow me on Twitter at Manuel Staggers. This episode is brought to you by Crypto Storage. Crypto Storage offers a proprietary solution to enable professional storage of crypto assets. The storage is secure both physically and digitally on the highest grade hardware security modules with detailed configuration possibilities for individual based access control. To learn more, visit www.cryptostorage.ch. Today's guest is Alexis Roussel. Alexis is the CEO of Bitty, a Swiss Bitcoin broker company that he co-founded in 2014. He holds a master's in new technology public law and has served as e-governance specialist for the United Nations. Alexis was also the president of the Pirate Party of Switzerland to promote a human-centric and distributed approach of a technological society. He is involved in the discussion around regulation of cryptocurrencies in Switzerland and is frequently in the Swiss media when it comes to privacy and digital rights issues. And now to the interview. So in my last interview series, I didn't get a chance to speak to you, Alexis, but I'm very glad we can do this now. Even though I know you have a lot of stuff going on, it's 8 p.m. You're still at your office in, in Neuchâtel. But uh, hello, Alexis, and thanks a lot for making time today for this. Hello, you're welcome. So how, how did you get into, into the space, into the whole cryptocurrency space? How did you get started with this? Um, that's a very long story. Uh, See you the, the, I mean, uh, I started uh, business-wise in 2013, but uh, I've been, uh, I've been uh, looking at this and watching the, um, the space for some time. Uh, basically, I'm, um, I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, specialized in new technologies, so uh, been, uh, I did my studies in the in the nineties, and uh, back then it was the internet bubble. Uh, I was a son of engineer working in a space environment. My father was a space engineer, and it was great because it was all about adventure and going to space. And when I was a kid, but um, uh, but he was really fond of uh, computers, so he pushed me uh, uh, a lot in that, that direction. And then um, I started doing uh, legal work uh, in the, um, uh, legal databases, and I was not, always interested in the, 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 um, the, the technical part. And I started working uh, for the United Nations as a, uh, specialized, as yeah, making a database for, for a court. And um, basically, what, what, what happened is that I, with this mixture of law and, and tech, I discovered a, a field which was the how the society is using tech or how tech is influencing the society. And that, that's my whole story is about, okay, uh, how do those two come along uh, together? Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and, and I've been doing this for the, in the UN. That's my first career for seven years in the UN. I was like, called e-governance e officer. Uh, basically, I was uh, helping com communities or cities in, in Africa and in Eastern Europe to add digital services to their, um, to their cities. Mm -hmm. what, kind of, what kind of services were those? It can, it's, it's, you know, that was really simple. You know, having a website was already a good thing uh, by, by then. And, uh, and then having someone answering the email when you were you, you were sending an email to the, the city email. Mm -hmm. uh, these kind of things. I mean, we were thinking about much things much more uh, complicated, but for them, that was already a big step at the time. Um, but uh, and but during that time, I, I made a lot of research. I, I was I was a lot inspired. I was close to the the the, the cypherpunks movements, um, uh, and. Um, and being like really infused by, by, by those ideas. And then um, at the same time working at the United Nations, I was close to uh, governments officials that were uh, trying to understand uh, these changes, uh, these, these, uh, what, what internet was bringing as a change in the society. Mm -hmm. And basically this is when something really struck me. Uh, that was in 2003. 
um, that was the World Summit on the Information Society, and I was participating uh, in the organization of it. And um, and there uh, we discovered that, I mean, every state official from any reasonable democratic country uh, had one question in their in their mind was okay how do we control this internet and how do we control the people on the internet and how do we make all these totalitarian uh, systems in place so that we control everything and, and and i was listening to them and i was saying but you're democratic you're representing a democratic country and they said yeah yeah we, we are democracy people are voting and this is fine they gave us the mandate to do so and I was like, no, there's, there's something wrong. Is um, there was a mismatch between uh, whenever those people were thinking in the digital uh, realm, in the digital side of life, then they were there was they, they were losing all their um, ability to think as um, democrats uh, or democrats or humanists. Uh, and uh, I analyzed that, that much, um, and I, I figured out that these people were coming from uh, schools from. Um, uh, political parties from uh, a, a whole construct of things which uh, helps them to take decisions because those people they have to deal with a lot of subjects you know it's not just about internet one day but they have to do housing the next day and and uh, employment the, the 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 next day so they have to jump from one topic to another so they have uh, guidelines ideological and and constructions guidelines for them to be able to to propose ideas which is okay uh, and and I figured out these these things didn't have anything related to IT. There was no construct yet, uh, ideological cons construct available for people at very high level in governments to 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 be used. Mm -hmm. So um, this is when I was I I when I quit the UN I I already saw that that was in 2009. There was a, a party that came. There was the Pirate Party that came came out. On a very specific topic, it was uh, it was uh, um, copyright issues. It was um, uh, security issues, um, and um, <clears throat> so the pirate the it, pirate party. Sorry to interrupt, but it was the pirate party out of Sweden. Out of Sweden, exactly. Mm -hmm. That showed for the first for the first. Um, actually, even a couple of years later, before that, uh, 2009 was when it was created in Switzerland, and. Um, <clears throat> When it when it uh, when it came out, I was really um, uh, listening to, to to this, and I I felt that the generation, the people who were uh, joining there, had the, had the will to uh, to build that um, ideological uh, construct that is would be needed to uh, to organize a society of tomorrow in a in a more human way. I felt that, mm -hmm. so um, that's where uh, I joined them, and I, I took. Part of it, and I, and I actually ended up taking over the, the the presidency of the Swiss Pirate Party for for two years. How, how did that How did that go over with uh, your work at the UN? No, no, I, I had to stop. I mean, the UN was like uh, I had to be out of the UN to do political work. You know, you're not allowed to to have political activities when you're um, mm -hmm. uh, staff of the UN. So it was just I, I was in another life. I was working in the private sector uh, in Geneva and. Uh, <clears throat> It was um, it was really uh, so I could like implicate myself in there, uh, and uh, we really started thinking about okay, how does the um, digital society would look like? You know, it, and uh, we would try to work out our, our way out of just the uh, copyright issue or the security issue, but okay, how would a uh, how would a pirate in uh, talk about uh, employment and housing and health and social benefits and everything you know and how do we imagine this uh, this life at that moment and we we figured out that a lot of uh, basic construct and uh, basic uh, uh, conceptions like peer-to-peer -peer, open source collaborative consensus based system uh, we wanted to, to use those ones in in, in, in the in this uh, concept of the perfect pirate society mm -hmm. um, and uh, and we also discovered that the human being was like really in the middle of it and, and that basically we were the, the, the pirate movement is a humanist is, is a core humanist uh, movement uh, but that understand that the digital digital life has taken part of our is part of our life too so mm -hmm. and that is an extension and um uh and, and 
And then at one point uh, during all this thinking, it was like hours, hours of like during the night writing uh, a program for the party and going deep discussion with everyone. Uh, suddenly, in the middle of this, we have uh, weekly stuff to happen, and we have, well, we see these things like Bitcoin coming, showing up. But people were saying, "Oh, it's an experiment," and and I'm very, you know, when people tell me something, I usually tend to believe. So if someone tells me, "Oh, Bitcoin is just an experiment. Don't touch it. Just try it, and that's it." But uh, mm -hmm. then this is what I do. I, I don't touch it, and it's an experiment. Uh, but I was looking at it, and it was, it was interesting, and uh, I think then it was 2011 when the Wikileaks happened, and um, uh, Assange was um, was kicked out of uh, of the Visa network, was kicked out of his bank accounts, and he came to Switzerland. Uh, that was just a tiny bit before I, I become active at the party, uh, the Pirate Party, and um, actually just the, the Swiss Pirate Party helped him to open a bank account here in, in Switzerland. And um, uh, the, the Swiss Pirate Party was also the first one to make a DNS redir redir redirection. So the, the Swiss Pirate Party still owns the Wikileaks.ch uh, account, which was the first one to be used after they were shut down. So, I mean, there was there was some implication. Basically, we don't like censorship in that way. And uh, and also we realized that we don't like financial sense censorship. And then there's something crazy happened is that um, uh, there was this really unprecedented in, in Switzerland is that the, the, the post office where, where Assange went and opened a bank account actually mm -hmm. shut down his own bank his bank account without any uh, judicial process and um, and this is really unheard of in Switzerland and um, uh, they they um, um, it, it really felt like uh, and, and no, no, one, no one at the government or anyone in any institution did anything about it. So I really felt like they, they just were pressured by an external force by the US or whatever just to, to, to shut it down and they said okay. Um, uh, this this really felt like, and this is when the wiki started to use Bitcoin. So, okay, we'll switch to Bitcoin and now, now they're happy because they, they're sitting on, on Bitcoin which is worth a few, uh, more than 10,000 bucks and uh, 10, bucks and then um, uh, they they don't have to worry about uh, anymore. But this was like really a case of um, uh, resistance to censorship, to financial censorship, and uh, and for me it was also the case of understanding that basically um, money in in the in the digital society uh, is, is also money is also information, and basically uh, it it flows the same way. It wants to be free. It flows. Uh, automatically, it can be. Uh, it has to be peer to peer. It has to be consensus based. That makes sense. That makes sense. And Bitcoin in the middle of this was just rising as as like the perfect match for for this. Mm -hmm. That was maybe one of the very first uh, use cases, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, this was the. Um, there, there, there has been a lot of experiments before, but it was the first time. I think WikiLeaks is like really the first big event where people say, oh, it's actually useful um, in the case of, of censorship. And because it's, mm -hmm. and it's, it's fitting its purpose because it was said to be resistant, uh, to be anti-fragile, but, uh, uh, and that's interesting because in, in the price of Bitcoin is also um, a reactive to this. As soon as someone is trying to attack Bitcoin in some reason or another, and it shows that it's resistant and it can, or it's useful in in, in crisis scenarios. Then then it uh, it attracts people, and this is exactly so. It happened in 2011 with WikiLeaks. It happened with Cyprus uh, in 2013, uh, where also uh, uh, Bitcoin was a way to uh, to escape uh, uh, wrongdoings from the government. Uh, and um, and so on. We'll see more and more Bitcoin showing up as uh, as as, a, as something which is uh, resisting um, some wrongdoings from uh, an institution or you know, any kind of authority. And every time it will, uh, then people will see. Oh, it actually still works. So and the price will will, will increase. Uh, it's one of the price mechanism of Bitcoin. But um, the um, so 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 that. From that moment, it really became clear that Bitcoin had a place, and uh, and and then we had a good argument because we're in Switzerland. Uh, Switzerland is a very conservative country. It's um, 
it has some a lot of things which look like looks like uh, the, the, the 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 crypto scene right, that we know right now. It's open source. It, uh, I mean, the country is pretty much open source in the sense that people are following the rules. Uh, the people like to follow protocols. Uh, it's consensus based. Uh, it's multicultural, so we you can be whoever. There is a lot of there's different religion, different different languages. I don't say it's perfect, but uh, I mean it's one of the countries that matches the most um, uh, the um, the open source community uh, elements. Mm. And um, and well, in a sense, it's um, I mean it's the world's oldest democracy. It's the world's oldest democracy. Yeah, someone said I think it's Voltaire who said uh, with uh, in history the, the Swiss people, the Swiss nation will be right. Um, and then um, uh, the a Swiss uh, historian who took this from. Uh, Voltaire said, added to this phrase, yes, but at, at least as long, as long as they tell about it, you know, so Swiss are so mm -hmm. very, they don't tell much about what they're doing. Yes. Um, yeah, they're Swiss, and, after and all. They're, they're Swiss, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but one thing was interesting about Bitcoin is that uh, suddenly, you know, I was, I was bragging, uh, being uh, for, uh, for some time as a politician, uh, I was bragging about uh, freedom of speech and about uh, don't touch our digital rights and or build our digital rights and don't surveil me, don't do a big brother, uh, don't put a train horse in my pol in, in a, don't build a police state with the train horses. Uh, all this they have been doing, uh, and um, I, we didn't have much grip in the discussion. You know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we were mainly like shouting, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. Um, and uh, people say, saying, yeah, but you know, terrorism is more important and uh, f whatever uh, kind of fraud is more important. So it doesn't matter if we destroy internet because um, most of people didn't realize the, the impact of digital life. And then suddenly you have something which touches um, something much, uh, it's very core, it's about, it's about value. Uh, something suddenly in the digital realm has value, uh, and it's a piece of code uh, which is based on cryptography and it's based on a lot of work by by a lot of people. It's based on open source. It's based on a community. It's based on uh, it's it's running on a peer to peer network, and it has all these things that no one understands, and it has value. And people start to use it as a as a way of payment, and um, and this is when I understand like oh. Okay, now I know how I'm going to get the Swiss people. Is uh, they I'm going to get them by the, the money aspect, you know? Because when you talk about money, then everything is very serious. Uh, so you can get down people on the table and talk about a really serious topic. And uh, and this is exactly what happened: is that the, the development of of the uh, of the crypto sphere in, in uh, the crypto finance sphere in. Uh, in, in Switzerland, in general, is is being taken very seriously. So first, first people say, "Oh, it's a scam" or whatever, and then very quickly they're like, "Oh no, there's there, something behind. It's just not geeks in a in a garage making uh, strange things we don't understand. It actually has value, and it, they there is money flows and everything, and there's value being generated about that, and mm -hmm. uh, and then it becomes a serious topic. Uh, mm -hmm. So 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 then Bitcoin becomes the Trojan horse. To actually infuse in the society those uh, those new norms about uh, how a digital society should uh, look like, um, and, and and for something really stupid uh, like uh, a digital signature, for example, uh, the Swiss government has been trying to do like many governments to to, to make a, a, a digital identity scheme with a signature, and uh, and they've been failing project after project, and it's costing millions and millions because they try to do a system where basically the key is generated by the government and then given to the, to the user so that they can sign. But that does, that's not how signing works. Signing is, comes from you as a, as a person. Uh, you have to generate your own keys and then you can sign with your own signature. And, uh, and this, this, this whole simple uh, um, uh, concept of uh, self-signing and uh, auto, uh, self-generated uh, identities um, is is um, is now being pushed through cryptocurrencies in Switzerland. Um, Alexis, what do you think about this whole current um, debate of using the blockchain maybe more than than Bitcoin itself? It's um, that's a natural way. I mean, we'll be using more and more blockchain. We'll be using it more and more for uh, other things. 
Um, uh, what I see now is that um, the, the people are, are pushing in a lot of projects, uh, which is which is good. It brings a lot of innovation. You know, people are trying out a lot of uh, tokens and new systems and using blockchain for many many different things. Um, but uh, they 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 a lot of those projects fail to to reconnect to the, the basics is that first when you when when you're building a blockchain based society first you need to have the transactions and the core values being set so uh, how to do a transaction how to value what is being transferred how to decide how to know to know if a transaction was good or not and, and start making your business around these transactions and controlling your keys managing your keys and and and, and suddenly you you create some, you create a base a uh, baseline of um, knowledge in in the in the crypto uh, finance and and then once you once you start to trust the system for the most fundamental things is transfer of value then you can start build putting other things on, on it and uh, you can start to put logic logic in, in smart contracts so you have a, a bit more complex uh, interaction and uh, and then 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 only uh, with time when when the, those systems are being cherished as uh, the, the most valuable uh, uh, social uh, connection interactions records that we have then we will start to re uh, record something else on there we will start to record um, real life will be record uh, recorded on there and we, we can we can we can interact there but um, mm -hmm. uh, right now there's a there, there's there's two ways I see uh, uh, in, in the blockchain space where people are a bit are going a bit too far uh, is that uh, some of them are, are yeah like inventing use cases of very far-fetched uh, which is in a sense very good in terms of innovation uh, we need to go that that far uh, and to show it also shows that uh, well, what is uh, possible to be doing but it's a bit like uh, inventing google in 95 uh, or 93 uh, that was a bit maybe too early um, why is that you think because uh, it's hard because it's hard for them uh, it's hard for a whole organization that has been set up for some of the banks are like 100 years or 200 years old um, and uh, they've been working in process. They have, have a culture uh, which is based on on, on the paper culture, and um, and and they have been moving into the IT uh, into the IT space uh, using computers. But they the, the fundamentals of their understanding of life does not include this part yet. So if you come with cryptocurrency and suddenly you tell them. Uh, it's the CEO who needs to dig digitally sign a transaction. Uh, that's not something the whole system they, they have been building is their the system is not built around that. Uh, it might, they might they, they might be able to change and to 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 to, to move, uh, and some of them will, but. Um, uh, they, they have too much uh, too much things. They, I've been hearing too much the uh, the story about uh, people saying, "Oh, uh, just ask the IT guy to do it." You know, um, uh, and and when you go into the crypto space, you need a, you need responsible people who are able to cope with the responsibility of like signing a transaction and doing money transfer. It's it it sounds te on the technical level very stupid. It's it is very sometimes it's very trivial. But um, it's the whole approach. It's not. It's not just an IT guy can fix that in the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's actually a whole culture you have to build in the company. Mm -hmm. It's a buy-in you need from the top as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is which is absolutely lacking currently, right? I mean, in Switzerland and elsewhere, elsewhere too. Yeah, they 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 they, they starting they are starting crypto uh, projects, but it's uh, it's like uh, what happening now in those big big uh, corporation or banks or whatever is that you have at the, at the top. Uh, maybe they actually don't, don't even know about it. Uh, that's the case. Uh, but if they do know about it, is they, they they go like, hey, okay, do an experiment, and they ask like some guys in a corner to do an experiment or to start a, a more serious project. Uh, but they, um, uh, it's not a fundamental culture change in the company. It will lead it to it. It will lead to it, and and when it will come, it will be uh, uh, quite damaging for the companies. It will be as hard, uh, or maybe even harder. Then, uh, when telecom company became internet company, mm -hmm. uh, telecom yeah. provider 
just uh, having a network of cables and f uh, providing a phone service, and that was the only service they were providing. And suddenly they come into the internet world and they have to reprogram the whole business uh, uh, on top of internet. And today they're still providing the phone service, but the phone service is just one of the service uh, next to internet video and all, all, all other things. So there will be the, it's Andrea Antonopoulos who, who mentioned that the first time, and I really like his, his I'm reusing his, uh, his, analysis about uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, infrastructure inversion. You have an infrastructure inversion happening and um, uh, basically uh, you have a, a current infrastructure and blockchain in this case and the uh, open blockchains are bringing a new infrastructure and now you need to reprogram everything. But the way the infrastructure is organized uh, has, has an impact on how you organize the business on top of it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an excellent chance for new companies to come in. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, uh, a lot of old companies will, will will be able to make the shift. I think that's possible. Uh, look at the, um, the the telecom sector. They actually, uh, uh, some of the companies did manage to, to go through. But for some of them, it was really hard. They had to through a, go through a really ch big change of culture, uh, change of brand, change of... Um, uh, how the, the whole way they were treating and um, uh, servicing the, the, the consumers. Um, uh, so, and the, the products they had to, uh, imagine that when you were setting up an ISP in, in 92, 93, uh, or even a bit before, before internet, you were, yeah, at first you were working without any, you, you, had, you had different types of protocol you had to choose and you were making a, uh, uh, you're giving a modem to the people and, and the phone line and, and you fast forward 20 years later you are giving a setup box with video and and, uh, and Blu-ray and uh, fiber mm -hmm. and uh, lots of services so you have to be able to to foresee these kind of changes some companies like so you have new companies that came and were able to push these kind of changes because they have the divisions and and some of the big companies were able to to the traditional companies were able to to play the game and to to uh, to also move in the direction, but it was hard for them. Mm. You also started a crypto company. Yeah. So that was 2013. Uh, I I met uh, uh, my first partner, and uh, basically um, uh, we met because um, he was uh, looking for understanding. He's an entrepreneur in the real estate. It has nothing to do with. Uh, with uh, Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and uh, but he he bought some Bitcoin and he wanted to have some understanding. So he he knew at that time I was like the the, the pirate party guy, and uh, so he um, he wanted to see me. So we we, we hooked up, and um, and uh, basically yeah, at the end of the few hours discussions that we had uh, about partially me uh, explaining what I thought. The importance of Bitcoin was in the society and in history, and uh, and him um, explaining uh, also how he was seeing the market and, and things like this. We said, well, well let's just do something. You know? And uh, the, the first thing was, uh, okay, what do people need in 2013 when you're talking about Bitcoin? And it was the first thing people needed was buying and selling. Mm -hmm. And this was, um, um, so we said, okay, let's just buy and sell Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. For, for retail, for people, mm -hmm. just to go in there. And uh, and then we started uh, from there. We look at the market at that time, and it was like very small. There was like two companies, a few projects, people starting. Okay, so we just went for it. And um, and the first uh, months was, um, before we set up the company, we set up the company like uh, late uh, December 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was registered in January 2014. And uh, the basic work was... Um, a regulatory framework uh, to see okay how is Bitcoin going to be treated and um, and uh, that, that was a bit that was a, a long part where I was working alone like studying uh, all the, the financial system in Switzerland and the legal system to finally uh, to kind of pre um, for, to, to kind of imagine how the government will react uh, when they will they will have to deal about Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. and, and at the same time, at one point, there was a parliamentarian who started to ask a question about Bitcoin and say, hey, um, 
uh, I saw this uh, TV show in the US where people are buying drugs with Bitcoin. We should do something about it in Switzerland. And uh, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, it that so it started all like this. And the government in Switzerland, uh, they 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 kind of um, put they 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 put the question aside. But they took the um, they took this the question as an opportunity to start answering because there were some real projects showing up at that moment, mm -hmm. and basically what they said in 2014 with the the their the basic report, the first report on on cryptocurrencies that they did was exactly what I thought during all my months of research. So basically, that my my file the the file with the regulator was just fitting in uh, what we what we uh, expected. Uh, or that the government will say, uh, and and then we could start. In, we could start it immediately, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we basically we just started buying and selling Bitcoin. You know, putting an ATM in Geneva. Uh, uh, it started off with uh, Bitcoin notes somewhere and uh, getting Bitcoins on some exchanges and uh, have an Excel file. Um, um, buying uh, to record all the, the transactions mm -hmm. one by one. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, uh, I had uh, one of my first partners who was the CTO at that time who started building the, the, the machine that we had from mm -hmm. scratch. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And, um, and that, that, that started like this. Um, it started like this and, and it, took a, it took a long time to, um, to, to, to work out because then we had like a lot of challenges, regulatory challenges banks uh, we we didn't have a bank account for like a year and a half in Switzerland mm -hmm. uh, we had to, uh, to 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 face constant uh, questions from uh, uh, from regulators and, and spending a lot of time explaining them um, auditors uh, they had no clue so they had to we had to explain to them uh, so so we spent a lot of time building uh, this uh, knowledge uh, in in our in our uh, in, within the actors around us. Mm -hmm. So you were one of the first exchanges in Switzerland then. Yeah. So 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 that that's the specific of the Swiss market is that in 2013, I, I for me it was very very clear that an exchange uh, like like you understand an exchange like Kraken, Poloniex, mm -hmm. uh, Bit, uh, Coinbase, whatever. Uh, was not possible in Switzerland unless you have a bank a banking license. <clears throat> For me, it was clear from 2013, and a lot of projects have failed, um, not under understanding this uh, immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, so that's why we chose the brokerage way. Mm -hmm. So brokerage is like I, you buy from my company, and I don't I don't keep your 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 money. You just send me bitcoins. I give you. Uh, you're a Swiss franc, and if you send me Swiss franc, I'll give you bitcoins, and that's it's very simple. Uh, and and I'm never holding your funds, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the core. Uh, that's the, that, that's today how the market in Switzerland is organized. Mm -hmm. um, if you look for for uh, a professional, for if you look to buy bitcoins in Switzerland, uh, that's the way it's happening with all the competition. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only way you can have a Bitcoin bank. Let's say, and you can deposit your money in an exchange is if you're abroad, uh, and uh, so this is smart in the sense that the Swiss government, by imposing not the Swiss government, the Swiss regulation, by uh, imposing us to have a banking license, uh, we we make something very much more sound, much yeah, it's much sounder mm -hmm. uh, community because uh, we don't take the risk of taking a lot of uh, deposits and then disappearing in nature, you know, and for mm -hmm. the for the safety of the consumer in Switzerland is much more, um, uh, yeah, it's safer in a financial way. But at the same time, because we cannot provide, no one in Switzerland can provide this service, people go outside in much more shady and uh, non-regulated uh, environments. And, uh, and so they still um, actually face a lot of risk. So, so, so it has a positive effect because it forces the industry to build itself in a very safe way. And it has a negative effect that actually the consumer protection is not really achieved because people go outside and use a lot of external services and they have a high risk. And if someone screws them in uh, in the US or anywhere else in the world, they have no legal way to, to, to fight them. Right. I mean, back then, I, mean, I assume you could 
just do something and see how it goes? No, no, that, 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 that's a misunderstanding. In Switzerland, we have a system which is threshold based uh, and, um, and this is usable by everyone. And you can, you can do a lot of things uh, based on threshold. If, you don't, if, you, if you're moving below those thresholds and those thresholds, uh, it's about uh, how much you make, how much volume you have, how much clients you have. Uh, and you have this like financial liberty at small levels and you can test things. And, um, and a lot of companies don't, uh, or a lot of projects uh, don't, don't know that. So sometimes, most of the time, it's by ignorance, or sometimes even if they know it, they're so afraid of um, uh, causing causing the, the stir uh, of the regulator that they don't use these um, these threshold mechanism. And this is how we started. We started uh, in January uh, when we started. You now we put the first machine in February, and when we put the first machine, we had no license, but we knew that we could do up to. I don't know, like uh, it was like two millions, two million franc in a year of uh, of mm -hmm. um, turnaround. Uh, to to uh, and that that's okay. That's under the threshold, uh, and and uh, you don't need a license. You know, you don't need to be financial intermediary if you do this. But why that? What I did at that time is I record I record kept a record of all transactions. So whenever the regulator came after and told me, oh, you already started before you had the license, I could show them, yeah, but look, I was under the threshold, so it's fine. And they cool. said, okay, yeah, it's fine. So, um, so, so Switzerland has this, this uh, system which allows you to test. It has a kind of, uh, uh, yeah, it, it has this threshold mechanism, which is good. Let's take a quick break for a message from our sponsors. Crypto Storage is part of the Crypto Finance Group, providing services for professional financial intermediaries and therefore bridging the gap between traditional markets and blockchain technology. The storage solution offered by Crypto Storage raises market standards by introducing a new security paradigm, which features two layers of dedicated and redundant hardware devices. This setup allows for a dedicated, independent and highly flexible multi-signature framework. All transactions can be independently reviewed and approved on a dedicated tamper-proof hardware. The hardware security module, the tamper-proof signing devices, and the tailored software solution are all developed by leading Swiss providers with vast experience in finance and IT security. To learn more, visit www.cryptostorage.ch. Your interactions with the regulator or maybe with the financial authorities, how, how did they unfold? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a really interesting, you know. So one of the key things in Switzerland people have to understand is that the regulator or the regulators, because there are many of them, it's a, it's a two-level two, two system, uh, the regulators do not receive any funding from the government. Um, unlike most of the regulators around the world. And why is this important? Because uh, who pays the money is actually who, who, who tells where, where the direction is going. So the regulators in Switzerland and all of them are paid by their members mm -hmm. who are regulated by the regulator. So uh, if you're a bank, you, uh, you actually are a member or you're affiliated, you're authorized by FINMA and you have to pay fees to FINMA. Okay, so you are providing money to FINMA to pay for its salaries. And the same for uh, companies which are financial intermediaries like ours, we use a system which is called the self-regulated organization. And we are a member of those associations and we are paying fees to be regulated. It's a, it's a, it's a voluntary system. And which means that, that they, they are being paid by, by us. Uh, by, and, and since two years, they see that all new projects are being done in the crypto space. All new applications is being done in the crypto space. And there is no traditional companies which is being built today. No new, uh, no new membership request that comes from the traditional finance. Mm -hmm. So they see very, they, they see since one year, they understand that the, the wind is shifting, uh, is moving, and they, they have to embrace this change because otherwise, if the regulatory system in Switzerland doesn't onboard 
cryptocurrency com companies, what will happen, cryptocurrency company will stay in the illegal space or non-regulated space, mm -hmm. and they will just lose members until they don't have any more members and they don't have any more financing. Mm -hmm. So it's very funny that, that it, this, this mechanism is pushing the, um, the regulators in Switzerland to, be, to listen to the new companies, especially if there is a strong movement in one direction, they have to be open to this to this movement and to uh, find the right way to apply the law how it is intended to be. And in Switzerland, the the, the financial regulation is intent based. So you look what what is the the core intention, and then you 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 apply this uh, this to the to the the, 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 the situation. Mm -hmm. And um, in that sense, they have been. Welcoming, welcoming. Not very heartfully, maybe at the beginning. Or mm. I, I had some discussion with some people who saw the uh, uh, Bitcoin was a Ponzi scheme, and two months later, the guy was my supervisor. Mm. Um, so that that there that, that was some uh, crazy, uh, mm. crazy scenarios. Um, but in general, they're like opening up uh, very much because they have this uh, money incentive themselves. And uh, but at the, on the other side, they have to work on their competency level uh, because now they're entering into a space where they're they, were, they are forced to enter into the space. We are forcing them to go there, and um, uh, they try to understand what's happening. It's hard, and they try to then uh, propose some technical measures, for example, and uh, and we answer. To them with um, cryptography answers, you know, answers about protocol, answers about uh, the answers are technicals to a lot of things that they request, and they have a lack of understanding, and they have a lack of being able to answer to those uh, to the to the things they trick. They ask themselves, you know, they, they ask us to to give a feedback, and the feedback we give, they are not able to analyze and to answer to. So, mm -hmm. so this is they need to do to to work a lot of on, on their competencies, yeah, mm -hmm. and this is this is. This is creating a, a, a bit of a trouble in the community right now. Uh, in general, that regulator wants to do something good, but uh, they need to work on their competency level. Mm -hmm. How are they going about that? Well, they, 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 they start to talk about um, hiring people uh, in the field that that last conference uh, uh, question was asked to to representative of Finma, and uh, uh, they already set up a fintech desk, so like a dedicated mm -hmm. desk. And this desk today, uh, it, it was set up for uh, the fintech, so it was set up for uh, crowdfunding, uh, lending, uh, uh, robo advisor, and all these uh, these uh, uh, things uh, before. And now it's focused like hundred percent on crypto related mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, so they they did set up a desk, but it's still mostly people who um, uh, still have to go more, go deeper into the technical detail. But they're 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 going their way. But again, it's an it's a cultural change, mm -hmm. and it's not about just one desk, but it's the whole institution that needs to embrace and understand the changes. That's going to take a bit of time. Yeah, yeah cool. Are you happy with uh, being in Switzerland and running your company yeah. out of here? Well, I'm I'm Swiss. So I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy to be. <laughs> to be uh, well, the reason uh, I ask is because I mean, some some companies or some founders I speak with, they are somewhat frustrated and they say we have to go somewhere else. We cannot get a bank account here. Yeah, yeah. The, the bank account thing is is a hard topic. Uh, we have a bank account. We have it for like now in a year and a half, mm -hmm. uh, and we have it with the Cantonal Bank, which means that it's it's kind of a state bank right mm -hmm. here. Um, I mean, it, it, a lot of people um, don't. Um, uh, and, uh, let's say I took the convincing part very seriously. I, I took a lot of time going and and making pushing the right buttons in the in the society uh, in my space around me and and uh, finding, for example, that uh, finding the right people in the local government in the bank. In the economy here, to 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 point out that uh, a, a state, a local cantonal bank mandate is to help 
uh, the uh, the local economy and by not providing a bank account to the crypto world sphere they are failing at this core mandate and mm -hmm. to, to, to point that correctly in the in the right way uh, it's we were man we managed in here in Chatel to 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 unfold this uh, and it was more mostly an, uh, a comprehension issue and now there is a there, there is there is a, a kind of a, there is an agreement uh, between the state and the bank that they will actually uh, look at crypto project as long and of course as long as it fits the local economy so you have mm -hmm. to set up your office here create jobs here and then they'll talk so mm -hmm. it's a bit hard still okay it's not just about uh, calling the bank here in the chatel and say hey can i have back account that mm -hmm. doesn't work uh, you have to show you you're creating jobs here mm -hmm. um, but at the same time uh, we also managed to 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 allow companies and we have at least two now and maybe other, but this is a model which is going to be replicated. That companies are being created in the Chatel without a bank account, and they are being they are being registered. And Bitcoin or Ether has been used as a, as a, as capital um, to be to be as and registered to the business registry. So uh, it also shows to the local economy, hey, it's, we don't need we don't need completely bank. So uh, of course, my business need bank need the bank because we need, we are like in the boss world. Mm -hmm. uh, we do the gateway between fiat and, and, and crypto, uh, but some of the new business model don't need that. And they have a service provider like us, so they can still pay things in crypto if, in, in, in Swiss franc if they need it through us. So, mm -hmm. uh, so this now creates a balance like, yeah, uh, you're, you, you are the bank, you're, you still have a role in the econ economy, and if you, if you do that, if you perform that role, actually will make money out of it and they are making money out of the the crypto uh, world for now that's for sure mm -hmm. so 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 yeah so it's a lack of of um uh, it, yeah um it's a it's a, a lack of understanding of what the role of some of the banks is and uh, and uh and uh, and, but at the same time, I can understand the banks are being faced with a lot of requests of a lot of scammy things, and they have no clue how to analyze things. So it's hard for them too. So I do understand mm -hmm. them. So that's why I spend so many hours in like make showing up the right things and making the right turning the right buttons and in, in all the right person and all the right systems. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like you said at the very beginning with WikiLeaks, um, there was no tool first to do it without a bank. And now there are tools and companies yeah. are using Ether and Bitcoin mm -hmm. and sidestep the whole you know, requirement to have bank accounts. Yeah. Um, do you get a lot of questions from entrepreneurs who want to come to Switzerland and start a crypto business? Um, uh, yeah, we do. Yes, we do. Um, I mean, here in the Chatel, the community is pretty much organized. We we send everyone to the representative of the state <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. because there is Mr. Blockchain at the state, and uh, he's uh, uh, he uh, he knows all the community here. And uh, I mean, someone who wants to actually settle in the Chatel, uh, he can go to that person, and he will be driven around for for a visit, and he would have everything in 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 hand. To, to decide to, to move into to, to start mm -hmm. here. So it's pretty much organized, yeah. Mm -hmm. So w if you look at the ecosystem in Switzerland, or maybe more specifically in the French part of Switzerland, mm -hmm. right, around Neuchâtel, how has that changed in, in recent years? Um, so the ecosystem, Neuchâtel is very small. Huh? You know, the sort of city is 30,000 people, the canton is 300,000 people, so it's very small. So I think we created around 50 jobs right now in Neuchâtel. So uh, it's uh, 50, real, 50 jobs in maybe four or five, no, I would say five, six, six different companies, uh, which are almost all 100% uh, into the crypto sphere. Um, mm -hmm. And um, uh, and we do we all do different things. We have, there's a, there's a, uh, there's VT uh, who's financial intermediary. Uh, there is a research team, uh, True Level. There is a, a law firm. There is a uh, there is a minor a stake. <clears throat> Miner on Komodo, which is called, which is called uh, Andinod. Uh, there is a hardware a hardware uh, wallet company in the short form, which is working on a project. Uh, I don't know them very well. Uh, there, there, there are few there, uh, and and uh, so that's about 50 people. There, there's a fund, 
there's a crypto fund also being managed from the Chateau. Um, cool. So, so this, so this is a real, this is a small community. We know each other. We we work also together, um, and um, uh, that's good. It's but it's tiny. If I look on the rest of the Romandie, uh, there it's a bit more complicated because there is a lot of. Uh, uh, there's a lot of hype projects, you know, like I oh, will do blockchain this mm. or blockchain that, but real companies with with, with real clients and uh, uh, real turnover, there's not that many. I, I don't know much of them. Uh, mm. And Nushata has been focusing on on the real uh, activities, even though if it's small, huh? we don't we don't, we're not big companies in Nushata, but we mm. have a real activity and uh, we actually produce uh, things. And, uh, and we have customers and it's turning, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't see much in the in the, the rest of the Romandie where there's a lot of, uh, um, uh, yeah, it's still, we're still really in, this, in, the, in the thinking phase, in the, uh, in the uh, seeding phase and, um, mm-hmm. and, and no much uh, customer ready uh, project. Mm-hmm. What do you think needs to happen that maybe more people get into this space as entrepreneurs or also that more people adopt the services that uh, these new crypto companies provide? Um, actually, not much. <laughs> not much because the trend is there and, and we don't need to... Uh, we don't need to, to, to make the trend go faster. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, businesses are shifting towards this uh, for many reasons um, uh, and one of the business case that we will see more, more and more and now we have one with the ICO part is okay uh, how you create your company how you fund your company your project is is, is uh, uh, using the, the, the ICO model and uh, and this will this will evolve into managing your uh, shares directly on as a token and basically your You're, you're creating you're creating your project you're creating your company and it's a registered company in Switzerland like any other company but suddenly you have a, a, a way of managing your uh, your shares with, which makes them directly available on the market and they're liquid immediately and 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 you can you can trade uh, you don't need to go to the uh, Swiss uh, uh, to trade shares of um, Nestle mm-hmm. or Swiss or Swatch or whatever you can You can trade the local company immediately, um, and that will generate. Uh, it will it will create um, a very interesting eco- ecosystem uh, when normal companies will start to use these uh, systems. Or, like, let's say, you know, a, a, a manufacturer who's, who decides to to actually um, uh, raise his capital, set up, and uh, record his shareholders. Um, equity, the equity as tokens, and and that, that that all these things with very tiny legal changes that will be done. That's not a problem. It's going to be done because the the, um, the Swiss are quite uh, are very rational. If they see if they see a good business a case, they will just accept those changes, and and we can make those uh, token ex- token as the equity as token. Um, Uh, can be reality, uh, can be legally recognized uh, very quickly. So that that's one of the things that is going to happen. Um, and then uh, and then there's another thing which is more about how it's going to how bad it's going to happen in the rest of the world. Um, crypto finance is breaking a lot of conceptions. It's breaking a lot of um, pre uh, pre arranged uh, uh, arrangements or. Uh, power structures. Uh, for now, we're still tiny, 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 tiny. But once you have a whole economy which is building there, and you have like, uh, we see people from the east, mm-hmm. Eastern Europe, starting to use crypto as a way of payment. Uh, and, and I'm not talking about uh, geeks or tech companies. I'm talking about industrial companies who who are th- who are sick of uh, corrupted countries and money that is worth nothing and so they started using cryptocurrency as a way of uh, means of payment in their in their businesses and we see that happening so uh, and this is going to create tensions in other countries more and more and switzerland has a role uh, 
is already ha already you can see that, but will have a role of uh, of refuge. Uh, if you want to build your uh, business on crypto, uh, Switzerland is going to be one of the. F if if there is a really major crackdown in, on the planet, uh, Switzerland will be one of the last places where you, where you can still do it. Yeah, when things go uh, go south, it's good to be in Switzerland. Yeah, that's a general rule, and but it's based it, it's based on those core principles because here there's value in the consensus, there's value in an open society, there's value in multiculturalism. Multi uh, even though some some people might uh, disagree, but we still we have different languages, we have different religions, uh, and there were uh, and we had to come uh, to, to 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 come over those 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 differences to build our democracy here. So, um, yeah, uh, we, the Switzerland is a very anti-fragile system by itself. And um, so it attracts a system, it attracts businesses or people who are, um, yeah, who are being, um, who, are, who needs to f f go away from system which uh, uh, doesn't allow them to be free enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Since you um, were working at the UN and, and you were in the cypherpunk movement and then you started the, the Pirate Party in Switzerland, have some of your views changed? Um, no, they, 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 uh, they become, they were more refined. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you, you get... Um, uh, you get uh, less uh, aggressive, and your your arguments are being uh, you're trying to push your arguments a bit further in the in the reflection, and not just for like uh, uh, kill them all and we'll survive anyway. We'll win anyway. Peer to peer is going to uh, you know kill the, the kill the music industry. We don't need them, and uh, just let the peer to peer system uh, go uh, work. Um, maybe the, it's less radical today. Uh, but um, mm -hmm. but actually the changes we're pushing are much more deep. Uh, I'm pushing for a change, for example, which is um, uh, the, the, the follow-up of, of all of this is that uh, uh, in, the, in the Swiss constitution, uh, we, we, we notice that all these tech changes, uh, when we're trying to make laws uh, that uh, have a technological aspect, uh, they all fail to see that um, the digital part is actually part of life. It's 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 uh, today digital side is uh, is everywhere, and um, and so I'm pushing now for a change in the constitution which recognizes the existence of uh, our digital self, and um, uh, so basically in the Swiss constitution it says that as a human being you're 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 you have a body and you have a you have a mental uh, sphere and uh, those two items are protected uh, and they are protected to so that you the constitution can, can guarantee your liberty you, you need to be free of uh, aggressions against your body or against your your soul to be uh, to be a, a free thinking person and being able to to enter in, to be to be a good citizen to vote and to be a good businessman an entrepreneur in the, in the in the and to engage yourself and sign documents to, to make business uh, and uh, and now uh, we're going to we're pushing for this, to extend this notion to the digital self so you have you have your physical self you have your mental self and you have your digital self and self and if this digital self is recognized by the constitution at the highest level then we can guarantee then the maybe yeah, we give tools to people to think oh, then maybe we can try to see that uh, to guarantee the liberty and the uh, liberty of commerce, liberty of movement of this digital self, we actually need to protect this person as a digital uh, the, the, the being a part of the, the person. Uh, so this is going, so this, this thinking, uh, and now I'm, I'm pushing for um, this change uh, in Article 10 of the Constitution. And this very simple change uh, might have like big impact in, in the, the, the Swiss society in the coming year when it's uh, enacted. Uh, hopefully it will. And, um, and, and these, this, these thinking, going that far uh, uh, in, the, in the thinking, uh, I need to go through all this process of like also um, um, uh, 
uh, being maybe more radical at the beginning in my thinking and then uh, being more iterative, you know, say, say okay, things might take steps and try to hack the system the right way. Uh, sometimes you want to try to see just, you see just the consequences and you want to find the consequences. And, uh, and, and I'm always trying to, to look at the root cause and what is the, 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 the thing that you can reprogram easily so that the rest will naturally follow. And uh, uh, that, that's one of the things I found out in Switzerland, that if you say, mm -hmm. oh, uh, we have, we are a digital self, we have a digital self, then automatically uh, we were talking about signature at the beginning. You know, signature today is given by a state. Uh, he, this is your digital identity. This is how you have to sign. And in the crypto world, you have your you have your self-generated um, signature. And if you think it about uh, on a more philosophical way, when there is a this 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 human person is actually has a digital self then the digital signature coming from the self-generated digital signature is just a, a it's just an element of your, your, your digital person, your digital self, and it makes mm -hmm. sense. Like your physical signature, your written signature is, is a part of your, is an expression of your, your, your person too. And then all the construction of the law behind just follows. You don't need to, 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 to make a very, uh, convoluted systems to, to impose uh, a, a state-generated signature to, 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 the, uh, to the economy. You just let the economy decide what, what is the best self-generated self uh, signature scheme and we'll find out the right agreement. Maybe it's a digit Bitcoin signature, maybe it's another type of signature that will, will prevail as the, the standard uh, uh, a signature system. Uh, there was a kind of trial. It, it comes from further away. You know, it comes from the PGP. It comes from the cypherpunks who were who were building the uh, um, uh, and uh, the, uh, the crypto anarchists also with uh, building the the, the, the PGP uh, web of trust. And people were doing very tribal. Uh, tribal social mechanism where uh, okay I see you I recognize you as a person so I sign your I sign your key you're a real person behind this key okay that's good and but the, the, all these experience uh, all this has been there's been a lot of experience that the way but this, the state didn't was not able to take this into into account yet. So in Switzerland, we're going to push for that change. And I think it's going to, to bring a lot of good because suddenly we'll have an economy. Uh, it will be a digital economy, which will actually be the, the uh, an economy where, um, uh, which is the, the result of the action of people who have a digital part. Uh, it's not um, an, a digital economy which is trying to serve people in the physical world, and and they're trying to to take their data and to 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 use this data against them. It's actually an economy made by people with a digital self in uh, for them, and this economy will be serving them. And, and crypto has a space there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, I could go on, <laughs> listen, listen to you <laughs> talk about this for, for hours. Um, Alexis, you're very active in, in the community. I mean, I often see you on Telegram yeah. groups answering very detailed uh, technical questions about crypto and blockchain technology. Um, what, in your view, what is a, maybe a common misconception that a lot of people have about this whole space? Um, the, the main misconception is about how much value uh, represents one tiny, tiny bit of line of text, which is, repre which is uh, representing a, a hash of a transaction or, uh, um, yeah, just, uh, just this, this record in, in a blockchain. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and people don't see the value. People don't see the effort, the, the, the millions of hours of work of people of the community to come up with something which works. Uh, the, 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 the amount of, uh, of energy, it can be good or bad uh, in terms of like power consumption. You can see that in a good way or bad way, but still there is a lot of power uh, which is dedicated to this. There is, um, there is this, this I use, yeah, we, we often use the word magical, but it's not magical. It's just a perfect equilibrium 
of, of game theory that Bitcoin found. Um, uh, and all of this allows you to, to, to pre-build a huge sec uh, uh, security system that when you use it and you make a single transaction and you transfer a tiny bit of information, you have this immense value of the first time you have a piece of code that you can only use once. Um, and you have the guarantee that it's not going to be able to be used a second time. Uh, and, and that's crazy. And, and most of the people, uh, and a lot of people even in the blockchain space don't don't, don't, don't see this, uh, this value. And, and this is why Bitcoin has much value compared to all other uh, cryptocurrencies, because Bitcoin has proven uh, that in regard of this, how you build the value is the most robust and the, and the most beautiful system that there exists until now. Maybe there, and there, there are a lot of crazy great systems which are coming and we like we, we, uh, we, we started really to, to work on other systems and to, to uh, embrace other systems. But uh, Bitcoin has this beauty, um, which for now no one was able to take away. What do you think needs to happen that maybe it becomes more obvious, you know, what, what a great invention this really is? Um, uh, it's, you, you won't notice. People will not notice. It's, it's impossible to notice the, the, the changes. It's like your smartphone. I, okay, I, I don't want to compare the, the smartphone with Bitcoin. I'd rather compare like, okay, let's compare internet with uh, with uh, with Bitcoin and people don't didn't realize that suddenly they 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 woke up one day and the internet was everywhere and being used everywhere and they bring good services and bad services but um, they, they they don't realize that try to switch internet for one day in an office or even one hour and it's crazy no one is working anymore um, so uh, it will be the same uh, you know we can we can brag how how much Bitcoin is great and uh, and and that Satoshi Nakamoto was a genius and everything in 10 years of time or 15 years when the whole economy, world economy uh, has been reprogrammed over Bitcoin and Ether and whatever blockchain that will be at that time, people will just not notice and that will be normal life. Mm -hmm. uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah. so I don't think something needs to be changed. Um, uh, because the, the the movement is is, is so strong because it, it really benefits to the it allows people to be to be freer. Uh, at the same time, it will also create crazy things we want we don't want to see. I'm I'm really uh, I don't know how in certain countries they will use this technology to to go against people. Um, uh, so. I'm also afraid of, 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 of what we're building. Um, there, there is these two tendencies. And, uh, and if you look at the, um, I, I often compare that now we're in the digital, um, we're just starting the digital uh, um, industrial revolution, we just started right now, with a cryptocurrency being one of the, 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 the key elements. Okay, internet is the first, but then you have the crypto, the, the crypto economy. Um, and if you compare the uh, if you compare the, um, the 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 previous revolution the the, the physical industrial revolution, um, it had to go through a lot of phases. And uh, one of the phases was um, to get rid of the old system, uh, the old monarchy. The this uh, uh, it was based on rules which didn't fit um, the new economy, mm -hmm. and um, which was paper based and uh, free market based and. Uh, uh, that needed to 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 uh, immense that needed to get rid of the old system to be able to go to the Americas and, and set up new markets and uh, new industries. Uh, so we will we might have to go through this at the world at the at the scale of the world. Uh, we will have to go through this, and then one thing will happen is that once we will generate new types of governments, new types of governance system. Uh, in, in our societies to, to handle the daily life. Um, uh, I hope it won't be uh, that uh, the, the, the breaking through those, making those changes, I hope it won't be too uh, harsh. Uh, uh, but then it will create something great. It will create, the, it, it, will, it will 
push us in the real digital uh, industrial revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then we see what happened with the with the first revolution. The first revolution ended up in uh, in in applying the mo- the, the, the 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 all those uh, industrial um, uh, elements to to the to the worst uh, that you can imagine. It, uh, we we applied it against the human being, and and the, the second world war and everything was which was uh, around. I see it as a as the as the the um, l'aboutissement as the you know you take all the you can you take hundred years of building up uh, industries and processes and going to the trying to 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 build the marvels of the industrial revolution and suddenly you you use all these competencies and all this work against the human itself and, and you, you create mass destruction mm-hmm. uh, either through war either through extermination and uh, and and the human being will do, will might do the same on the digital during the digital uh, revolution. The digital revolution will will, will sparkle uh, a great industrial revolution. We'll have great things, and at the same time, at one point, I fear it will just turn back on ourselves. Uh, and and how are we going to 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 tackle this? Uh, so uh, people have no clue about it, of course. Do your do you have kids, Alexis? I do. Yeah, I do. Do they understand Bitcoin? Do they understand what the blockchain is? <laughs> uh, I mean, they're, they're a bit small, but uh, I mean, my son, uh, he understands one thing. <laughs> he understands that uh, Bitcoin is cool because uh, it doesn't have borders. You know, it doesn't stop at mm-hmm. the border. Uh, and, uh, you know, in Switzerland, we have to, to use the Swiss franc, and then we go to France, and part of the family is in France, we have to use euro. And uh, for him, this is a bit strange. Why do you, okay, why do you use two different countries? Bitcoin is cool, there's no, there's no border in Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I think that, 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 that he gets immediately, that he understands immediately. Then, um, uh, then uh, you know, the, I, have this, I have this syndrome that a lot of people who live in the tech have and when they have kids is that like um, I rather have my kids to learn how to code but I mean they they um, I also really want them to be like a lot of a lot of outside and reading and doing a lot of stuff and they don't have access to IT equipment uh, that much uh, there's no TV at home and there's no, the, 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 the IT is always uh, broken and uh, um, so that forces them to do a lot of other things, and uh, and and then I will bring them in and, and learn them, teach them, um, uh, hopefully the right way. Mm-hmm. We'll mm-hmm. Cool, yeah, fantastic. Um, if I mean, if there weren't any cryptocurrencies or no Bitcoin and no blockchain, what what do you think would you be doing? Um, good question. Um, no cryptocurrencies, no, no Bitcoin, uh, ha, uh, uh, oh, there will, there will still be internet. <laughs> <laughs> there will still be internet. That's already a good revolution. It's the next best was, thing, uh, right? That was the next best thing. Yeah. I, I missed, I was student when there was the, the internet bubble and I, I, I missed that one. And, um, so I didn't want to miss this, 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 uh, this change. Uh, but uh, I mean, yeah, I will still be uh, working in my. Uh, I will still. I was. I, I would be still building the uh, the the. the uh, building life around uh, the internet and all, uh, around uh, the uh, how you how you can make the human human being better by using. Uh, communication tools like internet um, and I mean uh, uh, eventually cryptocurrency would come back anyway if, even if you you would uh, make them go away right mm-hmm. now let's say tomorrow there is a there is a big discovery and uh, Bitcoin crypto is broken and then all goes to the, to the all goes to the waste and uh, for some I don't know some really a weird event with a quantum f- computers showing up and breaking everything uh, yeah then we would just start again because that's uh, just an idea which is present huh? it's uh, it's like internet internet is, is not a is not a it, it's a technical realization of, a, of, a, of an idea and um, and you can see every country where 
they try to 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 take uh, internet away from, uh, like uh, Tunisia, Egypt, uh, Syria. The beginning, uh, they rebuild their network immediately. Um, immediately, there were there was some some people reconnecting uh, phone lines or even cables across the border to just have to, to connect internet uh, to the pe to people. Uh, uh, people work, I think, in, in Egypt also. Egypt suffered some time for like one day or two days. They were exchanging on on private networks or even with. Uh, uh, so 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 the, the, when the idea is there, you don't stop it. You just rebuild it again. So yeah, if crypto goes wrong we'll just rebuild it because that's that's the future great i mean i really enjoyed this conversation thanks so much for taking the time today alexis thank you very much thanks so much for joining us today more info on our guests and our sponsors is in the show notes of this episode and on the podcast website theblockchainandus.com to help people find this podcast, it's important that you download, subscribe, and give it a top rating and review on iTunes or on the podcast platform of your choice. I'm Manuel Staggers, and I thank you very much for listening. <laughs>